Fuck up. What was the greatest night of your life? If you are over 21, it could be the night you met your partner, the night you had your first child, or some other mature and understandable life moment. If you are under 21, it was probably the night you went to the craziest house party with unlimited drinks, girls going wild, the perfect music playing, a car crashing into the pool, the SWAT team pulling up with a helicopter watching from above, then nearly the entire town catching on fire. Okay, you caught me. I just described the plot of Project X. It was just a movie. That didn't actually happen. What was the Except greatest night of you guys' life? It's the story of how life imitates Hollywood with disastrous results. It's a wildly popular movie about an out of control Stuck my team dick in the tip cup. drugs and big ticket destruction. The movie characters get away with just a hangover, but for real life teens copying these parties this spring break, the consequences are far more serious. After the movie Project X released, it inspired chaos all around the world, leading to some of the most out of control and occasionally deadly parties. Still to this day, young people attempt to live this fantasy by throwing Project X parties. But to understand the deep-seated obsession American teens have with this film, we must first analyze the four-step process that Project X took to manipulate their strategy on the big screen. The number one goal of this film was very simple. We knew from the beginning that uh, it had to feel like a real party. He can make something that seems so outrageous feel very real. It's, it's just fun, it's just so different. And the way it's shot, you know, the point of view style is just, it's very um, organic. Organic, natural, uh, realistic. Best night of my life is playing you football know, in front of thousands of people on some cheesy it's supposed shit. supposed to be every party that every kid would want to throw if they had the we most they're getting tackles. Possible. He's just really got a good Best night of my life. grasp of reality. It makes it more, you know, viable and more relevant that this party could occur and could happen like this. I don't think that's not it. Was the Bucks party last January? But I hit a random this, that raw. That did not feel like a real party. Random Make raw is crazy, bro. Real, real. <laughs> random raw is Step one, sick work. Hire an all-star production team. Joel Silver, no, executive producer, also produced Die Hard and The Matrix. Marty Ewing, executive producer, also produced Blades of Glory. Was it that or have Tom sex Phillips, for the first producer, time? Basically worked on tons of legendary party movies. I don't think I've had a best night of my life. Like no, I'm Road thinking Trip, about it. Old School and The Hangover. But another creative touch was hiring director Nima Was Narizada, he also who had Australian? No film experience, but created an iconic Adidas house party commercial in 2008 that looks exactly like what Project X would become. Nima's area of expertise was actually in music music videos. Since the music and chaotic party scenes became such a memorable part of the movie, it makes sense that an experienced music video director was the reason why they looked and felt so damn good. Despite everyone behind the scenes being seasoned cinema veterans, on screen they wanted the cast to be nobodies. But before we get into step two, a quick word from today's sponsor. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top sh get absolutely for good eye trouble. A slight barrier to list actors is one of the most Fuck effective up, ways Patrick. to market a movie. However, there is a slight barrier with famous actors where their characters are hard to separate from their real life personality or from a previous role that you always associate them with. The fact that nobody knew the cast was what allowed viewers to feel like they were just some teenagers with a camera. The three main characters in Project X look like your regular, unspectacular high school kids. They aren't necessarily nerds, but rather anonymous, almost invisible. That's what makes them feel so relatable. They sort of blend in, just like most of the people you went to high school with. Even the high school they filmed in is depressing, outdated, and prison-like, which is extremely accurate to American schools. To find inexperienced actors, the casting directors created open auditions on the website projectxopencall.com. The header on the site let people know the movie was created by the same producer as The Hangover, which was a $277 million box office smash hit. People were asked to submit Rose a Fighting on Saturday after all. Damn it, Raul. Tell us your most. Not look like he was really stories. sick. Tell us your craziest party story. Tell us about your riskiest or most daring thing you've ever done. If you wanted to impress someone at a club, show us how you would dance, or show us the one thing that you do that makes your friends laugh. After sifting through tens of thousands of submissions, they were able to discover one of their leads, Jonathan Daniel Brown. Seth, what's the one thing you do to make your friends laugh? Lead. The other two leads, Thomas Mann and Oliver Cooper, were found through traditional casting. Thomas had acted in one movie previously, and Oliver had no previous acting experience, which is surprising because many people felt that his performance carried the energy throughout the film. What up, my lovely females? This is your boy Costa, your host for the evening. Behind me is Thomas Cub's house. Today is Thomas Cub's birthday. And this 
is Project X. It's also worth mentioning that the trio does kind of resemble the cast of Superbad, not just the way they looked, but even their characteristics. This was likely intentional as well. The fuck up, as though, mentioned not before, these non actors drunk. were no names in Hollywood, so casting people I'll that make looked or laugh felt now like that the Superbad crew, which was made just a few years before and already secured a legacy as one of the most accurate depictions of high school Americans in cinema, was definitely a big brain decision. There also was a fourth member of the crew. Give it a five stream streak, bro. I appreciate that, man. Dax Flame on YouTube. Glad to see you in this video. Five times in a row, five title defenses. A subscriber base of likely the target audience for this Come film. On. Plus, his character ties perfectly into step three. Step three. Let's make like motherfuckers uncomfortable Derek's and amuse myself. Some cool shit. Camera. Some in cool the beginning shit. of the movie, you learn that he is filming a home video of this party. Now turn your camera on, bro. That's just funny. Birthday. So when you that see be comedy. transitions between scenes or characters not being perfectly in the frame or the quality and focus of the footage varying in every shot, it helps sell the idea that this entire thing is just a home video. Dax was also a bit of an amateur filmmaker in real life, adding a layer pussy. of authenticity. Bitch, bitch. His film style is commonly referred to as found footage, which created perhaps the Seth, most fuck realistic the random now of his all. Dick Some of the footage that made it into the film his was just one of the random extras holding a phone and filming what was going on. The production crew passed out camera phones, blackberries, and handy cams to the partygoers. Their vision being if a party this wild actually happened, many of the attendees would pull out their phones just and vote for cams. title defenses. The production crew thought it would be extremely difficult to manage this many extras you're, you're gonna take demetrius johnson's record up daily how would they try to nah, stop 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 make sure the same people are coming back every night but they saw the opposite result the extras were extremely cooperative and didn't even want to leave keep in mind this movie was i ain't gonna lie fucking with somebody while they're asleep is the lamest shit ever just stage a party they were partying there technically was no that being said one time i went to uh, i don't really fuck with dude anymore but had a dj when he was my friend i went to his house his mom opened the door he was upstairs sleep i put a whole bottle of water in his face that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Stage. That is the funniest shit I've ever seen, bro. That shit was so party. fucking funny. What is a party? Without the music. Step four. But that shit, nah, bro. I wouldn't want that shit done to me, man. He deserved it too. The movie is when I told this girl, for whatever life, reason, she was talking more about. Than that, this film is jam packed full of music. It basically never stops because, getting tested. well, when does music ever stop at a party? The music supervisor. Me, honestly, like so tight. I would kill someone if they did that shit to me. Soundtracks on roughly five to seven Volk major e films damn. every year. He's an expert. So when they Volk told him the goal was to make it realistic, he executed perfectly. When he was asked about yeah, his I wouldn't like that shit at all. It's annoying major goals one was to keep it authentic and make it feel like what these kids might really be listening to and then two was to escalate the party and get into the heads of the kids and bridge the gaps between what they're listening to and the emotional feelings you're looking to have the audience feel as well however it's not exactly a versatile soundtrack it's mostly hip-hop bangers that were released in the early 2010s like trouble on my mind by push a t well, first time to get comfortable now you just woke up with in the most comfortable like the spot is full of cold Snoop, water as well as nasty if i ever Nas. wake up bald i'm on the news that day that have been cemented in history as local the bald man looks X. absolutely goofy as the fuck after this more on this story would not be complete if these two songs were not played pursuit of happiness we found him via a trail of vegemite and, and hennessy track remakes these songs were strategically Seth, can we get an interview? No. Nah. producers <laughs> to fully immerse the viewer into the climax nah. of the night. At these moments, but yeah, Ilya being treated happen. like a gold, no goaded fighter you're already. Typical MMA fan saying every champ will become goats. 100%. When your buzz is 100%, bro. We gotta, we gotta see. Tom will tell. It's just because he beat Volk, though. That's gonna come with beating Volk. Head but you, Robro. Bald ass head, head on head, scalp to scalp. Any money from the song. Project X Go ball, man. Caught stealing oh, no, from I'm sperm bank. That's a flat <laughs> fee, remix fee. I got paid a very small amount in 2009. You know, how many shows did he get on? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Seth? I mean, it would be nice because I heard it's triple platinum. After this calculated four-step process, making this film feel as real as possible, it released in March of 2012 and was a certified Three humans. smash Volk was never a 145 go. Anyways, Aldo was and still is. Universally hated the movie, with publications Make the argument. like NPR calling it a nasty, nasty piece of work. However, there was a point brought up by many critics that was definitely true, and they kind of predicted the future. Todd McCarthy from The Hollywood Reporter wrote, the wrap-up does not spare the boys, and Thomas in particular, of life-changing we'll consequences if you want. for their delinquency. But a certain self-justifying feel-good impulse compels the filmmakers to imply that, even if they do nothing further of note in their lives, they'll always have this. And Patrick Gamble from Cineview had a very similar opinion. Was Nine title defenses undefeated for 10 X years. Is its utter lack of moral 
consciousness, with the overriding message being that such disregard for property and community deserves little more than a slap on the wrist. At first glance, these reviews come off as old people yelling at teenagers for having fun, but they are accurate here. After the SWAT team comes in, the town catches on fire, and everyone escapes the party running for their lives, the trio get abundant news coverage, become legends Somebody of their high school, hit me up, resulting in a standing ovation from classmates. Thomas is still able to get the girl that was going to lose her. eventually. He showed just a quick still of the consequences the belt belongs faced, to no one. which were disturbing the peace, contributing to the delinquency and of the and for 10 years. riot. Despite this, Costa is invited onto the news to promote his next party. Better around the same I got a better idea. same but amount of impressive wins, fuck before. those 10 years. What? Yeah, you heard me I want to love so I can see. is it crazy see. to think that a movie depicting in the most realistic way possible an epic party Wait, where the host ends up as a legend who gets the girl and a little slap on the wrist Ooh, would inspire teenagers Yo, girl, no, you all around like that, DJ? to do the same thing? Hmm? If you said no, it's just a movie and everyone knows it's fake, you'd be wrong. It Back when I first became owner of Mint Mobile, Shut the I fuck up! The first and longest running customers was seen... It didn't happen once, not twice, but so many times that I can't even girl. tell lock you in, about all of them. Not locked in right now. But here are some of the craziest ones. Now, it's been widely speculated that Project X is inspired by an infamous party thrown by 16-year-old Australian Corey Worthington. But this speculation has actually been denied by the producers and cast. Because it's based on real people, like that Aussie guy, that Corey Worthington period. Not really. I mean, it's kind of... No, this, this, this is was, really... I mean, it's just different. On January 12th, 2008, Corey Worthington learned his parents were going on vacation to celebrate the new year. So he hatched a plan to throw a party while he had the house to himself. Corey and his friends started to advertise the party on their MySpace and Facebook when the word spread like wildfire. The party was meant to be a small gathering, but soon turned into a full-blown rager. More than 500 people showed up, and the crowd was so large the party spilled out into the street. The crowd got out of control, and people started to throw glass and bricks and break neighbors' mailboxes. Oh there were God. hundreds of kids causing destruction for no reason. The first police unit backed off until they were reinforced by a helicopter, dogs, and more well-equipped officers. After a few hours, police finally got the crowd to disperse. This made national headlines in Australia, but what made it so iconic was Corey's image and attitude Yo, when being interviewed on A Current Affair Australia. Take a few glasses and apologize to us. I'll say sorry, but I'm not taking on my glasses. But what would you say to other kids who were thinking of partying when their parents are out of town? Get me to do it for you. Get you to do it for you. Not don't do yeah. it. Nah, get me to do it for you. Best party ever so far. That's what everyone's been saying, so. Maybe the Project X producers denied Corey as yeah, he looked like the most mid 2000s douche like ever. Prove of this behavior because it only took a few days after the film's release for a Project X inspired party to turn deadly. On March 14th, 2012, just 13 days after the film's initial release, 1,000 high school and college age students in Houston, Texas attempted to recreate the events of Project X, but it turned deadly. It was being advertised as a foam party with promises of free alcohol and drugs. Women who wore bathing suits were granted free entry to the party, according to the flyer. Around 12.30 a.m., police responded to a noise disturbance at a foreclosed mansion in southern Houston. Upon arrival, they encountered hundreds and hundreds of teenagers scattered all over the property, using drugs and drinking illegally. Doing what needed to be done to keep everyone safe, police had to break up the party and started dispersing the crowd. As Is that how dumb people are? Property, tensions escalated, leading to an eruption of gunfire, which tragically killed 18-year-old Ryan Spikes. Witnesses of the murder later said, kids took to the streets, but the parking lot was overpacked so you couldn't get out. It was just people in the actual street. They got into arguments and started shooting each other. Another witness to the killing had this to say, the gunman was just walking, and he pulled out a gun and started shooting, like for no reason. He shot the boy in the back of the head and he fell on the ground. He started shooting at the crowds, but then he ran through the field. Police chased the shooter through the field and into the woods, but lost him in the dark. After four months of a relentless investigation, they finally found the gunman. 22-year-old John Gibbs was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Crazy enough, there was another Project X party in the same city just four days before. <laughs> Thirteen teenagers who planned the party broke into a brand new $500,000 home that was recently built, which they used to host an absolutely massive 2,000-person party. During the party, the insane crowd broke nearly oh. every window in the home, put holes in almost every wall, ripped doors completely off the hinges, and left empty bottles of liquor everywhere. Among the bottles, sheetrock was across the floor mixed with the glass. 
All of this destruction managed to cause a grand total of $100,000 in damages. The building owner compared it to being hit by a tornado. What's mostly crazy about this particular party is that the host may have gotten away with it if it wasn't for a private investigator named Mark Stevens. Mark Stevens was hired by the builder of the home that was destroyed to investigate who threw the damaging party. When asked about the incident, he said, Look at what happened here. The parallels are just uncanny. They did, it was a copycat. They did everything they saw in the movie. The day after the party, Mark came back to the home to investigate. And at the time, Mark noticed another. After this happened, they had Houston on lock. Party, suspecting it was the same host, Mark called the police, and the group of thirteen responsible for setting up the original party were taken into custody. When they asked why, how they so? Did, they simply said Project X. But on the exact same night chaos ensued in Houston, Calgary, Canada nearly witnessed the same disaster. Calgary high schooler Hunter Mills tweeted that Project Chris, a Project X style party, would be hosted at his buddy Chris Morey's house. Hashtag Project Chris went viral on Twitter, trending in Australia, Asia, and the Middle East. Luckily, the party was called off due to an overwhelming amount of interest, but it actually ended up getting moved to a new location, a bar. And eventually, about 200 people showed up to this bar, but the venue had to close for the night because they couldn't handle the overwhelming Look, it's got people. more ass well, than a Logic album. Blues, That's a bar. Somehow, Yair is still ranked. Logic's not even ass. Somehow, Yair is still ranked number four. Lead to Arnold and Mozart should be above him, to be honest. Morgan Rager blew up on Twitter in May of 2012. They gotta beat him. Let me see Yair get a win. Yair yeah, should retire, Cap. In Pittsburgh was planning to throw a party. His buddies tweeted the hashtag, Ross Morgan Rager, and within hours it was trending internationally. Word spread throughout the entire city within hours, and every corny, though? Pittsburgh was planning on attending the party. In the following days, high school teachers were ordered to read this email aloud to their <sighs> classes. Bottom yeah. line, there is no party got some corny moments. House. The local police are aware of the rumor. Ross's parents are aware of the rumor. Every effort via Twitter has and continues to be made to expose the rumor as a hoax. Ross Morgan and his parents had to vacate their house for the weekend, and they even had to hire an off-duty police officer to watch the house while they were gone. But Ross secured his legacy when he went on the local news to praise his classmates. What it has done for the school is, is truly amazing. Everyone now is now friends, which we, what we thought wouldn't happen with uh, less than 20 days left of our senior year has brought us all together. I'm sure by now you're noticing a trend of all these parties. Hey, Everybody's giga should happen. I think everyone's that. Someone wants to throw Police were everywhere. Buddy spreads the word via text or social media. He fun until the motherfucker knows how to grab him exactly. Getting on the local news afterwards, just like the movie, to certify your legacy. However, for this Utah teen, her interview on the news wasn't celebratory because her party led to five people being gunned down. In March of 2012, 16-year-old Destiny McCubbin's parents were going out of town and she decided to take the opportunity to host a party. She was quoted saying she wanted the party to be like Project X. The North Salt Lake City, Utah teen said goodbye to her parents on Friday night and she invited around Give 50 Wonder people Boy to her house. Then 170 showed up. Neighbors complained only asking her to keep the noise down. Little did Destiny know, members of the Norteños gang showed up at her party. Their rivals, the Isai Longos, heard the Norteños were at the party and decided to confront them. Destiny tried her best to prevent the situation from escalating, and when she opened the front door to ask them to leave, things nearly got deadly. And as soon as I opened the door, they just started shooting. This guy just started shooting and it hit me in the foot. As Destiny sat on the floor bleeding profusely from her foot, she said, I was just in shock. I couldn't believe what was going on. And everybody, everybody was running. It was all my fault. I shouldn't have thrown this stupid party. Three of the victims were treated at the hospital and released shortly afterwards, but a fourth person was more seriously injured. Evan Ward, a 19-year-old, was shot in the throat but miraculously survived. A month later, Clearfield City Police announced that they had arrested two shooters, 19-year-old Mark Anthony Pisana, a Norteños gang member, and a 15-year-old boy who was a Eastside Longos gang member. However, the closest anyone ever came to replicating Project X was called Project P, which took place in Macosa County, Michigan, and ended with the most memorable post-party interview of them all. The Project P Facebook page was created in July of 2014, <laughs> five days before the event, Facebook a promotional page. flyer was posted that read, prepare for the craziest event of your lifetime, with the host names as well as a parking fee of $3 per car. This party was set to take place in Hinton Township, Michigan, which can be described as literally the middle of nowhere. There is not even a gas station in this town, but the power of the internet prevails, and a total of around 2,000 people, mostly under the age of 21, showed up to the farmhouse about two hours 
hours outside of Detroit, Damn. the park was equipped with DJs playing live sets, a fire thrower, and exotic dancers. Since the party was in a rural area, noise wasn't an issue. No neighbors were around 20? to complain. Police Give were Arnold Allen and Edson Barbosa? A traffic complaint and cars parked in the I don't know why I feel like Edson gets that done. The 911 calls got more serious. He has no calls. Everyone knows he's ODA. He's on heroin. You guys need to come out here now. I have no idea who this guy is. But we just talked to somebody that's having a heroin overdose and they're putting him in a vehicle and taking him out. Are they no, not? not? He's, he's not in a car right now. The person called again saying... We called about the uh, guy who was overdosing. Yeah? Yeah, I'm trying to get people to help me get him out and no one will help me. Okay, then so do whenever it. the ambulance gets here, like... You're, my you're ambulance gonna... can't get there. There's well, too many people. Unfortunately, the dispatcher couldn't even help them. Although it's easy to criticize law enforcement and public safety officers, a remote town like this is not equipped with the resources to service this many people, and the road being blocked just made it that much harder. After the event, six people had to be hospitalized from drug and alcohol overdoses, and one man broke his neck after falling off a roof. Damn. As if it couldn't get any worse, there was a report of four men carrying off one girl and taking turns assaulting her. Police arrested three of the organizers named Daniel Mincer. Really wants to be Connor so bad. Brittany yeah. Johnson, the social media promoter. Some European James shit. Taylor, the homeowner. In the state of Michigan, they have what is called a social host liability law. The law states anyone who provides or sells alcohol to a minor can be held criminally liable. However, they can also be held civilly liable. If a minor who was served alcohol causes someone's injury, Alan is not death, putting Barboza out. Who served them he finished Dan Hooker. Come on now. Hooker moved down. Exactly. So if someone leaving the party as a drunk driver smashes their car into someone's home, the host of the party can be criminally charged. Also, another law that actually landed the three in custody was that they were collecting money for parking and serving alcohol. Can when you wait a edit I made? And serve alcohol without a sure. liquor license, that is a crime in Macomb, in Michigan. Despite all the repercussions the host faced, he did not seem to care at all. I didn't force anything down anybody's throat. I didn't make anybody stay here until 7 a.m. or 11 or whenever it is everybody finally left i didn't make this kid pass out on my floor <laughs> people wanted to be here that was their decision and if you're a parent that's got a 14 year old child that's been able to be at my house all night and apparent according to the police there was a lot of them here so i think some parents should do some reflections on their parenting before they start getting mad at me you say to anyone who says you're responsible i am it's my house. You got to deal with it afterwards, but apparently it was worth it. And just like in the movie, he received nothing but a slap on the wrist. After taking a plea deal, he does not have a felony on his record. He just has to perform 80 hours of community service. Our expectations for the morality and decision-making skills of teenagers Edson B. Hooker at 155 is actual weight class. Manipulated it's a hell of a moment of an interview. Mistakes. Just now, sent it back. Project X to blame for these parties. Well, sleep on our, he was 19 to 1 before Max. The media outlets are just as guilty. These news outlets spend all of their time comparing the parties some to dude the on the floor. Bro is still passed off in the party. Priority finger at the kids. But clearly, they never finish watching the film because they still fell into the trap of inviting the teenage host onto the news. And the reason they invite the host on is because they need to. They profit off delinquency, crime, and hide it under yep. the guise of it being news. But in reality, they want this stuff to happen so they can boost their ratings and make money. These kids throwing these parties are clearly not trying to hurt anyone, nor are they trying to cause chaos. But their dumb teenage brain told them that this will make them a legend. And for a lot of them, kind of worked because their post-party interview on the local news cements them in history as one of the most epic party throwers of all time. This movie even inspired me to make a Project X style song and music video. It's called Party Crasher. So go check out the video and let me know what you think. Uh, that was a good video.